Hey there everybody, welcome to the FY6 classroom. Here the F in physics stands for fun. Today we're gonna to be talking about cereal. Well, not really cereal, but you know, I just, you know, I just finished some, so. Uh, here I got my two favorite types of cereal. I got Money Bunches of Boats over here and I got my Praisin Branch over here. Now I'm gonna use these two boxes of cereal to represent a concept in physics whenever we are pushing blocks against each other. And it's gonna talk about forces. So whenever I push these two blocks this way, there's a force that's going on. I'm pushing on both of them right here and they both end up sliding that way. Now, there is actually a force between these two surfaces right here where they make contact. So if I were to put my finger in between them, there's a little bit of force or pressure, if you will, on my finger as I'm pushing these two boxes across the table here. Now, there's really not that much force that I'm feeling. There's really hardly any pressure on my finger. That's because both these boxes are empty. Now, uh, this one over here probably is a little bit heavier than this one because it's a little bit bigger, but I wanna make this one over here, my praisin branch, a whole lot heavier. I'm gonna put this one kilogram weight inside of the box here, so let's do that. Okay, much heavier now. All right, so now if I were to push these two, I can still slide them across the table, but I'd still feel like there's a lot more weight over here. But anyway, what we're trying to focus on is the force that is felt in between the two surfaces right here. How much force is there uh, when these two, between these two boxes? So if I were to push these to the left towards the money bunches of boats cereal box here, and I would put my finger in here, I still wouldn't really feel any pressure. I don't really feel any more pressure than I did whenever both of them were just empty. But let's push them this way now, and let's see how much force do I feel, uh, or pressure, if you will. Oh yeah, I feel a whole lot more pressure right there. I feel a whole lot more pressure when I'm pushing it towards the heavy box than I do when I'm pushing it towards the uh, really light box here. So there is a difference in pressure uh, between these two contact forces between the two boxes. If you wanna try this at home, feel free to pause the video and do so. Go find two boxes and make one of them a whole lot heavier than the other one and just push them around and then put your finger in between them. You'll notice when you push towards the light box, there's really hardly any pressure there. But when you push towards the heavy box, well, you're gonna feel a whole lot more pressure on your finger. Go ahead, pause the video, go do that. Okay, great, now that you're back, uh, let's do a few little problems with this. Uh, put this over here. Where's, where's my, put them up here, right here. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I have this problem. Well, actually I have a lot of problems, but let's just focus on this physics one right here. All right, so I got three different blocks. Each one of them has a different mass. We got mass one, mass two, and mass three. And I'm pushing on all of these to the right with 60 Newtons of force. And what we want to figure out is the contact forces between the blocks. So we wanna figure out how much force is there between the five kilogram block and the 10 kilogram block, and also the force that is in between the 10 kilogram block and the 15 kilogram block. All right, so the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to find the total acceleration of all three blocks. So we're gonna assume that these three blocks are acting as one block because they're all gonna move together. And so we need to find the total acceleration of these three blocks in this system. To do that, we're gonna use Newton's second law the sum of the forces is gonna be equal to the total mass, I'll put M with a little T down here, multiplied by the acceleration. And we're gonna to try to figure out that acceleration. Now the sum of the forces, or the total force acting on this, will be the 60 Newtons that's right over here. So we can plug that 60 Newtons in for our sum of the forces. The total mass will be mass one plus mass two plus mass three. So that's five plus 10, that's 15, plus 15 again, that's 30. So the total mass is 30 kilograms, and we're gonna to try to figure out the acceleration. So to do so, that's 60 divided by 30 equals A, and the acceleration ends up being two meters per second squared. Now that's obviously not our answer, we're trying to figure out the contact forces between these, but this is the first step in solving that problem. Now the next thing that we would want to do is figure out, well, 
how much force is there on this box and this box and this box individually? Or I guess you could think of it as how much force would it take to move just this five kilogram block on its own at two meters per second squared? So we wanna just really figure out how much of the force is coming from the five, the 10, and the 15 right here. So basically what you end up doing is you take the sum of the forces. Sorry, you'll find the total force on this block by taking the mass of one and the acceleration, which is gonna be two meters per second squared because these are all moving together. They're all gonna accelerate at the same rate. So the sum of the forces on just this five kilogram block will be equal to its mass, which is five kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration, which is two. So the sum of the forces, I'm gonna put a little one here so I know I'm talking about mass one. The sum of the forces on one is equal to 10 newtons. So we can put a little 10 newton up here. And then we can say the sum of the forces for two is equal to mass two times the acceleration. So let's just do this really quick. So the second one is 20 newtons. Now let's just do the third one. Basically, you know what's happening. You're taking the mass, multiplying it by the acceleration. Do I really have to do this again? I don't think so. 30 newtons here. Okay, we still don't have our answer. Oh, geez. We still don't have our answer, but we do have a lot of information here that we can use. We're pushing to the right and we want to figure out the force of one on two or the force from two on one. We could do it either way because we know Newton's third law third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So however hard this five kilogram block is pushing this way, the 10 kilogram block is pushing back that way. Now, here's the thing, at this point right here, the five kilogram block is pushing forward, but the 15 kilogram and the 20 kilogram block are both pushing backwards. And they're pushing backwards just as hard as this five kilogram block is pushing forwards. Okay. So we can say the force from one on two, that's a one, is equal to the force of two on one. So this 20 Newton force and 30 Newton force are both pushing backwards. Remember, if I were to put my finger right here and were to push this way, I would feel the force from this and this, which is very heavy. I'd be pushing into those and they would be pushing back on my finger and I would feel a lot of force. Well, how much force would I feel? It'd be the 20 plus the 30 Newtons. So we could say the force of one on two is gonna be equal to 20 plus 30, which is 50 Newtons. So the contact force right here, 50 Newtons. That's one of our answers. Now we need to figure out the contact force right here. Well, essentially it's gonna be the same concept so your, if your finger is right here in between these two, what pressure would you feel? Well, you would feel the pressure from everything in front of it. So there's a 30 Newton force up here. So 30 Newtons of force comes from this block right here, if you will. And that means that there's 30 Newtons pushing backwards at this point right here. So the force of two on three is gonna just be from this 30 Newtons. 30 Newtons of force right there. So just as a quick recap, there you go. So now let's review. First off, to find the contact forces between multiple blocks, you need to find the total acceleration of the entire system. After you figure out the acceleration of the entire system, you can use Newton's second law and figure out the total force on each one of those blocks, or if you will, how much force would it take to get this individual block to move at that acceleration? How much force would it take to get this individual block to move at this acceleration and then the same for this one as well. So I figured out each one of those and then when we're looking for the contact force, really we're looking for the force ahead of everything the direction we're pushing it. So here we're pushing things to the right. So everything in this contact right here, everything in front of it was creating an equal and opposite reaction backwards and the same right here, everything in front of this contact point was creating an equal and opposite reaction going backwards as well. Thanks to my money bunches of oats and my praisin branch, I hope you guys all had a good time. Like serialistly, I hope you had a good time. If you like this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out.